anyone who's been following my channel over the years knows that I talk a lot about rumors, especially when it comes to Nintendo stuff. Um, and a lot of times the rumors end up not necessarily being correct or coming true. There are obviously times when they do, when we talk about stuff that comes from like King Zell from Reset Era, as an example. Um, but more than that, uh, there are times that we cover rumors that come from Twitter and come from people that I don't necessarily know if I trust. Now, Sabby here uh, is a well-known leaker. I mean, most of this 27.4K following is from leaks. And Sabby has gotten a number of leaks correct. But there's also been um, reports and, 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 and kind of statements from people that Sabby isn't actually the source of this stuff. That he's actually getting it from different people at Reset Era or NeoGAF or other places on the internet, sometimes 4chan, and kind of regurgitating. So it's hard to know um, who is the source of what this information is. But what is kind of true is a lot of stuff that Sabby does put out there ends up being correct in the end. Now, Sabby put up this new thing uh, in 2020, so you can kind of figure out who this person is, or at least who they claim to be. Um, because we can't confirm if Savvy actually is a video game journalist. But you'll see that they say, you know, that a recent college graduate working as a journalist in the video game industry, I primarily write for Spiel Times and Nintendo Soup. Now, I know about Nintendo Soup. It's a site I follow a little bit. Um, but it's not really a big site, and it's not a site that I think would be able to pay someone to be a journalist. So it's got to be more of a volunteer position, which isn't a bad thing. But anyone can work that kind of position, to be fair. Um, it doesn't require you to be a college, college graduate. Um, but it primarily, primarily tweets opinions on games, tech, video game news, rumors, and sometimes leaks. Due to my extensive history sharing information from verified sources, most found me through said intel, blah, blah, blah. So he recognizes that most people uh, follow him because of that. Oh, also it's important to note that he says, more importantly, I try to use this Twitter to share my articles, share information from reputable sources, uh, give me on games and tech and connect to community people who like video games on all platforms, follow me for blah, blah, blah. So what he's trying to say is that he's not like a typical leaker. He's trying to trying to tell you that, that Sabby likes to think uh, he or she is a uh, credible leaker because they're a journalist. Now, I've been a journalist for many, many years. Um, from Zelda Informer to Gamnesia, I've, uh, I've written a little bit on Nintendo Everything in the past. I, I've I've worked at various websites and I've I've had you know conversations with like um, Rami Cowboy who runs um, Go Nintendo. Um, I've talked to people from Nintendo Life. Uh, I, I've I've been kind of all over in the Nintendo realm of of game journalism, and I don't necessarily think that that makes you any more credible. To be fair. Uh, when it comes to having sources, I'm not saying that I don't have sources, but I'm not also going to act like my sources are like the most reliable things in the world. They're actual people with actual jobs at places that could have access to certain bits of information, but it doesn't, you know, the information's always changing so fast behind the scenes that I don't really talk a lot about uh, my sources because they might be right and they might be wrong. And it's just not worth throwing out there. But if someone else is going to throw information out there, I'll at least comment on what I've heard and what I know. Uh, and when all these direct rumors started coming up lately, um, I have people behind the scenes telling me that, hey, look, a direct's coming like next week, basically. Um, this isn't me saying that it's going to happen, but uh, that's what I'm hearing. Um, so since rumors are already out there, screw it. That's what I know. Um, but again, it could change and be the week after or I don't know. I honestly couldn't tell you because I am not in charge of Nintendo Directs. But the reason we're talking about Savvy is not just because they've gotten a lot of things, you know, quote-unquote correct um, over the past year or two. Uh, it's because of some rumors that, that they're talking about in, in terms of what the major holiday title is going to be. Now, um, they talk about the Wonderful 101 and stuff like that. There's a new rumor out there that there's going to be a Kickstarter uh, for it coming up soon to bring it to PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch. Um, and Savvy actually talked about this before that rumor popped up that the Wonderful 101 was, was going to be um, rumblings of, of you know muffled words of a platinum and Wonderful 101 in the distance. Um, but what's interesting here is this tweet right here. This is the one... Um, that, that, that we're going to pay attention to now. You could talk about Paper Mario. The, Sabby's been talking about Paper Mario for a little bit. Um, but uh, this is the one right here that we're, that we're going to kind of focus on. Uh, Breath of the Wild 2 is taking longer than anticipated back during E3 of 2019. So it's making it sound like the original plan for Nintendo was Breath of the Wild 2 was supposed to be this year's holiday title. It might not make it out this year. So it's kind of being pushed to, to 2021 at some time. Maybe even early 2021. Um 
but that it's being pushed, even though we never got a release date for it, um, and that there's going to be a different major title for this holiday. And they are inferring that more credence to the major title I was referencing on a tweet the other day. Neither are set in stone, so take them salt. The more likely one has tires. Now, if someone had a major holiday title, you know, it could be F Zero, could you know, it could be um, Diddy Kong Racing coming back. Uh, but if it's a major holiday title, it's almost assuredly Mario Kart Nine. Now, um, there's been a lot of debate uh, among me and some of my hardcore fans on the Discord server on whether or not Mario Kart Nine even needs to exist this generation or should exist this generation. Because uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is the most popular and best-selling game on Switch, it just sold six million new copies, um, you know, in 2019. Basically, like that's insane. That that game that came out on uh, Wii U, you know, age, you know, ages ago, is selling that phenomenally well, still at 60 bucks a pop on Switch in 2019 and now 2020. So, you know, do we really need a Mario Kart 9? But what's also true is that. It's not like Mario Kart 9 is going to hurt Switch sales. It's just going to hurt the final number for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Um, Mario Kart 9 is assuredly a good thing for Nintendo Switch. It's going to move Switch units, and it is something that people are going to buy and buy a Switch to play in the midst of a PlayStation 5 and the next Xbox coming out. We, we've talked in the past about how Breath of the Wild 2 would be the right kind of game to draw attention away from those platforms because hey look breath of the wild was this must-have game breath of the wild 2 like who cares about playstation 5 i need to get a switch um but mario kart kind of has an even bigger appeal than zelda so not even kind of it's massively more appealing it's one of nintendo's most popular ips so that is also a very good game to combat next gen or when i say combat i'm more like get attention while next gen is launching uh so i the the, the biggest thing obviously for me Mario Kart 9 is not that it's you know should it exist it's going to exist just from a business perspective it needs to exist it's going to make millions and millions hundreds of millions of dollars for Nintendo to be completely honest but to me uh the the question is always what else can they do um it's not going to visually look much different than Mario Kart 8 Deluxe um they could add more characters and more courses, of course, and more items. That's what they always do. They always add new features. And I think Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was, was kind of the perfect Mario Kart game. Um, maybe I am just, you know, too wrapped up in the moment or something. But I've been playing Mario Kart 8 for a long time, Wii U on forward. And it always felt like basically the perfect Mario Kart. So I don't, I don't even know what they can do in 9. What I do know is that I'll still buy it, though, because Mario Kart has never really let me down. Um, I just I just don't know what more they could do. So I guess what I, what I want to kind of throw here for the end of this video is I want to ask you guys, what do you think Nintendo can do with Mario Kart 9? Now, I don't know if it's coming again later this year. It seems to be what Sabi is referencing, or Sabi, however you want to pronounce it, is referencing that we're going to be getting Mario Kart 9 this holiday. Uh, but I, I just... I can't help but wonder what else can be done, um, and does it not matter? Because even if it's just more of the same, you're gonna buy it anyways. Because uh, more of the same from like more of like like if it's a Mario Kart, you know, eight deluxe, but more of the same. I mean, Mario Kart eight deluxe is the best Mario Kart game in my opinion. Why would I not want more? Um, so I don't know. Throwing that out there, I think I think Mario Kart nine. By the way, like you guys, you guys were impressed by those uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield numbers, right? Sixteen million. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if Mario Kart 9 hits 20 million in the first like two three months. It's on the market. Um, that's how big a deal Mario Kart is. So uh, I don't know. You guys, let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. What What are your thoughts? What more could they do with it? Do you want to see you know oh, maybe oh, maybe multiple play styles come back, like bring back you know double dash style or something? Um, there, there's a lot of things they can do, but to me, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is so like this close to perfection for a Mario Kart game. Um, I'm not really sure what to do uh, with a Mario Kart 9. Granted, I don't work at Nintendo, and it's not my job to figure that out, but uh, it is something that it's always in the back of my mind. Like, you know, what what can they do with a Mario Kart 9? Uh, anyways, I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jantz, uh, known as Nate Jantz on this channel, uh, formerly called Nintendo Prime. We still primarily cover Nintendo stuff, but we'll be covering and expanding you know, our, our coverage as things go here as we get back into the swing of things. I want to thank you for tuning in on you this Saturday, uh, the 1st of 
February. And I do want to make a small little announcement at the end of this podcast, or at the end of this podcast, end of this video, uh, and it's about the podcast. The Nintendo Prime podcast is coming back this week. It will be here every single week from here on forward for the rest of the year. Um, if you would like to support the podcast, head on over to uh, patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. Become a patron. Um, you get you get different perks at different levels. Uh, the, the biggest, you know, I think perk that we offer is that for 20 bucks a month, you can be on an episode of the podcast. So go ahead and check that out. Now is the time uh, to get back on our Patreon and check it out and help out the podcast because we're, we've got a lot of big plans with it between Eric and 5J and me and all the guests that we're going to be having lined up for this year. Uh, it's going to be pretty fantastic and I can't wait. Uh, remember that podcast is a podcast we do live at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time on Thursdays. Uh, audio version goes up the next day. Uh, and yeah, um, I'm, I'm stoked. In fact, uh, if you do get on an episode of the podcast, I actually in the future, uh, moving forward, I will be reaching out to the people who sign up uh, for the, those specific weeks and asking them if there's any topics they would like to cover uh, so we can kind of tailor the podcast also around the interest of our patrons. So, um, yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. So I want to thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. Uh, you guys let me know what your thoughts are about Mario Kart 9, about this rumor. Do you think it's real? And what do you want to happen with the next Mario Kart game? Um, and, man, as much as it sucks to think I might have to wait even longer for Breath of the Wild 2, at least it didn't tell us a release date this time. So um, that's all I got for you. So until next time. I'll catch you guys in the next video.